So part of operationalizing our uh, criteria is defining the potential conditions or outcomes. Um, so we need to decide for each criterion what is good and what is bad, right? Um, how do we know what effectiveness looks like? In this class, for our purposes, we are simplifying this down to positive, neutral, and negative conditions. Um, and even neutral sometimes won't apply. Uh, in real life, you'll probably set much more specific uh, uh, targets for each criteria, much more specific conditions. In, in our, for our purposes, we're also not necessarily going to be weighting our criteria. We're just going to use them kind of at an equal weight, right? Efficiency, or sorry, effectiveness, efficiency, and say equity, we're going to give equal weight here. But in some analyses, you might weight your criteria uh, differently, right? Effectiveness might be more important than efficiency, or efficiency might be more important than effectiveness, or you know what, equity might be more important than either of those considerations. Um, and those are all things that you have to define out at the beginning. But for us, right, we're just keeping it very simple and keeping all of the weighting uh, the same for all of these. Um, and I think you'll understand these conditions, I think, just with an example. Um, and this is available in Blackboard as well. But um, just imagine that we are uh, we're working for DART, right, the Delaware Transit Company. And uh, we've been given the task of reducing our carbon emissions. Um, as our, our fleet carbon emissions. Well, we know that carbon emissions come from burning fossil fuels. And so we could track effectiveness um, by using fuel consumption as a proxy for our carbon emissions, because it's really hard to, to measure, right? The amount of carbon dioxide coming out of a tailpipe. It's much more, it's much easier to measure the volume of fuel going into the bus that's then burning it and turning it into carbon. Um, so this is a really great indicator that we could use for effectiveness. Um, so I've got my, I've chosen to use this criterion and I'm going to operationalize it. Uh, so effectiveness in this case is the extent to which or likelihood a policy option will reduce, reduce the fleet's fuel consumption in gallons per day as tracked by the fuel service. So I've given a very specific definition, right? I want to reduce the fuel consumption daily, right? So, so we're measuring it on average daily um, uh, as tracked by the fuel service, right? So we know every time a bus fills up how much fuel is going into that bus, right? There's a little thing on the pump, right? That tells us, okay, this one's gotten uh, 80 gallons of fuel today. So, so that's our definition of effectiveness. Now we're setting our conditions and there are a few ways to do this this, right? But we um, just at the simplest level, um, a positive outcome, a positive condition in this case would be that the policy option reduces uh, or results in a decrease in daily fuel consumption. So maybe our fleet, uh, our whole fleet consumes, we'll say a thousand gallons of fuel a day. Um, a positive condition would be that our fleet now burns less than that, right? 900 gallons of fuel a day. Um, a neutral condition would, would mean that there is no change in daily fuel consumption, right? We stay at that thousand gallons, um, or a negative outcome would mean that we actually use more fuel be, as a result of this policy than, than previously. Um, so this is the simplest way to define it. Um, and this is the way that a lot of students will do it. If you want to get fancy, right, you could set some targets. Um, you could... Uh, basically say, well, we expect, right, there will be uh, some reduction, but but we're setting a target for that reduction, right? We're setting 20% as our, our, our goal here. And um, anything less than that is less than a positive condition. Uh, a, a neutral outcome would be 10 to 19%. Um, and really, anything less than 10% is unacceptable right, as a policy solution. Um, so we do this all up front um, <clears throat> because this is what prevents us from doing the analysis and saying, oh, well, we found a, a you know, 5% reduction. That's a reduction, that's good, right? 
Um, we, we set all of this stuff up front to keep us all honest and to keep us all accountable to the, the goals and the targets that we set so that when the data points do come in, we know exactly what that data point means. Remember, we don't necessarily, we're, we're not implementing the policy and then measuring it. We've got to predict how we think it will do, right? We've got to make estimates of what we expect the policy to do, what we expect these outcomes or these, these indicators to, to return. Um, so we still have to predict the future. Um, and we have to decide this right now, right? We have to decide where are we getting the data points that are going to inform our analysis that are going to predict the future. And some of the, the, kind of key ways that we would do this is to just look at reports from other places. Most of the policy solutions that we come up with uh, have already been tried, right? We're borrowing policy ideas from elsewhere. Um, and so we know that if the state of Rhode Island has implemented a policy where, um, you know, buses have to turn off, right? When they're not, uh, when they're not driving somewhere, right? Um, and they have achieved a 15% reduction in fleet fuel usage, right? That is data that we can use to say, well, if they've achieved this result, we can also achieve, a, you know, we should expect a similar result. Um, so that's, you know, you will be looking at data points that do exist and then extrapolating them, right, so that we can expect this is what they're going to mean in our case, or this is what we can expect um, if we were to try that same thing here. Uh, sometimes there aren't necessarily going to be data points available to you. Um, you know, sometimes you may invent a policy solution totally from scratch. Um, so what you'd have to do in that case is just make a logical argument that, um, you know, this policy will result in uh, certain outcomes uh, based on other, other ideas uh, based on existing data and also just kind of logic it out, right? Like based on a, a kind of logical argument. Hopefully this is a little bit uh, clearer now, right? So we've we've got our criteria um, and then those conditions, right? Positive, neutral, negative conditions, right? And we've defined what they mean so that when we run across that condition, uh, in the wild, right, or in our in our analysis, we find data points that suggest, right, that condition. We know exactly what to define, right, what to assign that criterion, right, what our finding is. For this week's assignment, uh, if you haven't already looked at it, I'm going to show it to you. Um, we're going to pick back up with our uh, previous previous one. We're going to pick back up with policy analysis. Um, so again, just like before, you're going to copy and paste in your answers to your previous assignments with whatever edits I recommended to you in my feedback. Um, and then we are going to, uh, these are going to be new to us, right? So we're going to choose three evaluative criteria uh, from, from our list, um, and you're going to justify them, right? Explain why am I using this one? Where did I get the idea to use this one? Why is it important? Um, and again, you can go back to, well, you know, our policy solution, uh, you know, equity makes sense in this case, or, you know, effectiveness is always a consideration. Um, or the literature, right, is really concerned with uh, technical feasibility for this kind of solution or for this policy uh, problem. Uh, so, you know, justify those criteria, and then you're going to uh, operationalize each, right, and come up with those conditions for each. Um, again, it, it really helps to lean on existing work um, and, and kind of identify data sources um, that you're going to turn to early because that's really going to help you define those criteria and operationalize them.